the purpose of this video is to provide guidance applicable to the installation of a new avionics load version on the aircraft. The information provided here does not overwrite the information given in service bulletins and respective maintenance manuals. This video considers that the aircraft is already set up and in a safe condition for this maintenance procedure as per the AMM task and is valid for avionics software load version 5.4 and on. For this procedure you will need an Ethernet cable, four USB memory sticks, a laptop, a screwdriver and a notebook. The laptop must have the Windows 7 operational system or a newer version to establish connection with the IMS. The USB memory stick must be formatted with the FAT32 file system and must be empty. To be successfully accomplished, please register all the aircraft counter numbers on the aircraft cycle data page. You will also need to write down the basic empty weight and arm values from FMS defaults. You will need those values to enter later on. To do this procedure, you will need to have access to the IMS ports located behind pilot seat. To do this, remove the access panel and open the IMS panel. Make sure that these circuit breakers are closed. On the display unit located behind the right seat, make sure that the status of IPC2, IMS and TCAS2 are on. This procedure consists of six steps as shown. As the first step is to download all the files and distribute them in their respective folders to copy them later to the IMS, on the laptop create five folders with the names IMS files, media set, docs and tables, databases, license key. These folders will be properly filled with the specific files which will later be properly distributed on the USB memories folder. To copy the IMS software components files to the laptop, get access to the website www.flyembraer.com. Enter your login and password. Select the Flight Operations option. Choose the Download option. Select Executive Jets, Maintenance, Avionics Software, and the Aircraft Model. Click on the avionics software part number previously identified and select the IMAA load contents folder and go to the folder 4231 IMS software files and extract only the files listed on the SB. Put the USB identified with IMS files label on the laptop. It is necessary to unzip the files on the laptop folder before copying it to the IMS folder. Now copy the unzipped files from the laptop IMS files folder to the USB memory root folder. Remove the USB memory identified with IMS files from the laptop. To copy all the files for a complete IMA aircraft load software set, go to the folder ATA4200 IMAA software load files, select the set of IMAA files folder and choose the file complete set of IMAA file. Put the USB memory identified with media set label on the laptop and copy the files from the laptop media set folder to the USB memory root folder. Remove the USB memory identified with media set label from the laptop. To copy the avionics documents and tables files at Fly Embraer, select the documents and tables folder. Go to the folder set of docs and tables and choose the file that is in accordance with the information in the SB. You will need to download the APM document that is part of the documents and tables and is available at Fly Embraer. Selecting on avionics software, the aircraft model. 
clicking on the APM files folder, selecting the aircraft serial number folder, and then the applicable avionics software load folder, and upload both files. The ECL is also part of the docks and tables and is available at Fly Embraer. Select Flight Operations. Click on the electronic checklist. Select the aircraft model. Select the avionics software load folder and the folder related to the authority. And upload the ECL files to the docks and tables folder on the laptop. You will also need to copy the LRU files. To do this, Go to Avionics Software. Choose the aircraft model as applicable and the applicable Avionics Software load. Go to the folder LRU Field Loadable Software and extract only the files listed on the SB applicable to the aircraft. Insert the USB flash drive, docs and tables label on the laptop. Copy all the unzipped files from the laptop docs and tables folder to the USB memory root folder. Remove the USB memory identified with docs and tables label from the laptop. To copy the database, go to the Rockwell Collins website, Support, Database, and Software Updates. Click on the Flight Deck content. Download Database and upload the related databases files listed on the SB. To complete the database documents, you will need to obtain the Jeppesen Terminal Electronic Charts. Go to Jeppesen website. Download and install the Jeppesen Distribution Manager and upload the file listed on the SB. For this database, a subscription is necessary. Put the USB memory identified with database label on the laptop and copy all the files from the laptop to the USB memory root folder. Remove the USB identified with database label from the laptop. To obtain all the license key authorization codes applicable to your aircraft, Access the Rockwell Collins website. Go to Customers. Click on Customer Support Self-Help. Choose Encrypted Application Keys. And on the APM Serial Number box, insert the aircraft APM Serial Number and get access to your licenses. Transfer the PDF document to the License Key folder. There is no need to upload this file into a USB because it is only for informative purposes and it will be used later on. In the second step, you are going to copy the files from the USB memory separately to the IMS and install them into the aircraft. Connect the Ethernet cable straight through to the IMS and to the laptop. On the laptop, configure the network protocol for communication with the IMS. Make sure you are logged in as administrator. Make sure that the IP address is set to get the address manually. On the IP address, enter the address that is on the screen. On the subnet mask, enter the address. On the laptop with the internet browser open, enter the IMS portal page using this internet address and open the IMS Maintenance Portal interface page. On the IMS Maintenance Portal page, select Delete Media Sets. Make sure that the Not Installed option is selected. Select all the files listed on the screen and click on the Delete option. When the file is fully deleted, the progress bar shows 100% with a green indication. Click on the Install option and select all the files that are in accordance with the SB. Tap the Delete option to start. When the files are fully deleted, the progress bar shows 100% with a green indication. Put the USB identified with IMS files label on the IMS. On the laptop, continue on the IMS portal interface page. 
Select the Manage Files option and on the box, check if From USB is selected. Choose the files that you will transfer from the USB memory to the IMS with a check mark. Click on the transfer button to start. When the files are fully deleted, the progress bar shows 100% with a green indication. Remove the USB memory identified with IMS files page from the IMS. Select the Load the IMS option. On the IMS, make the Not Installed option is selected. Select the part number file listed on the SB and related to the software load set and click on the Install button to start. During the installation process, the IMS will reboot automatically. When the file is fully installed, the progress bar shows 100% with a green indication. Wait until the IMS becomes fully functional, checking if the LED in green color is shown. Do the refreshment of the page. With the installed option selected, make sure that the IMS file previously installed is shown. With the not installed option selected, guarantee that the files are not shown. Put the USB memory identified with Mediaset label on the IMS. On the laptop, enter the IMS portal page. Select the Manage Files option. And on the box, check if From USB is selected. Choose the files that you will transfer from the USB memory to the IMS with a check mark. Click on the Transfer button to start. When the transfer is complete, the entire progress bar indicates 100% with a green indication. Remove the USB memory identified with Mediaset label from the IMS. On the maintenance panel, set the Loader 1 and Loader 2 switches of the avionics system to the enabled position. To install all the software files of the IMA components on the laptop, enter the internet address to open the remote data load page. On the screen, click on Load New Database. On the Maintenance Data Load Password, type the password and then click on the Enter button. Click on the Load Aircraft Software Set option. On the Load Aircraft Software Set, drop the down list. Select the APM file related to the aircraft software load set listed on the SB. Guarantee that all the files listed on the SB show on the Software Set Details dialog box. option. Scroll the page to see all the information. Click on the software set the start button to start the loading. If the message load complete with errors shows, click on the view errors and select the retry failed load option to start again. After the loading is complete, the message Load Complete in green color shows on the screen. Put the USB identified with Docs and Tables label on the IMS. Open the IMS Portal Interface page. Select the Manage Files option and on the box, check if From USB is selected. Select all the files that you will transfer from the USB to the IMS with a check mark. Click on the transfer button to start. When the transfer is complete, the progress bars show 100% with a green indication. Remove the USB identified with Docs and Tables label from the IMS. If the SB lists the SFIS file applicable to your aircraft, open this circuit breaker and, after approximately 5 seconds, close it. On the SFIS screen, the message Data Load Ready is shown to indicate that it is possible to do the software upload for the LRU. To install all the software files of the Docs and Tables components, stay at the same Internet address. Click on Load New Documents and Tables. On the column name, make sure all documents and table file name are selected. Click on the Start Load button to start the loading. After the loading is complete, the load complete message shows on the screen. Put the USB identified with database on the IMS. On the laptop, enter the IMS portal page. 
select the Manage Files option, and on the box, check if From USB is selected. Select all the files that you will transfer from the USB memory to the IMS with a check mark. Click on the Transfer button to start. When the transfer of all files is complete, the progress bars show 100% with a green indication. Remove the USB identified with database from the laptop. On the IMS Internet page, select the Load New Database. On the column name, select all the applicable databases for upload. Click on the Start Load button to start the loading. After the load is complete, the message Load Complete shows on the screen. In the third step, you will have to go to the aircraft cockpit to enter all license keys previously downloaded. To enter the license keys, select the license MGMT option on the half tab. Use the information saved on the laptop folder with the name License Key. Select the Activation Key button. Enter the License Key code and push the Enter button. Enter all the License Key codes for the applicable APM serial number for all the optional software applicable to the aircraft. On the overhead panel, de-energize the aircraft and energize it again to cycle the power of the avionics system. Make sure all the applicable status for the license keys entered show Enable. In this fourth step, you are going to do all the activation of the Jepson charts by region. To do this, on the Pilot CCP, select the Charts QAK button. Click on the subscription on the Chart Task window and type the activation code related to your subscription. Then, push the Access Code button. Do this step again for all the regions available for the Jefferson subscription that have the activation code. In the fifth step, you will configure the FMS and enter all the counters values. To do the FMS basic empty weight and arm configuration, go to the system option and click on FMS and choose default. Complete the weight and CG boxes. Enter the counters values that you also registered previously. Procedure. On the menu, click on Maintenance, Utility Functions. Type the password and select Change Aircraft Cycle Data Page and enter all the counters values. In the sixth and last step, you will check the file's part numbers that you have just installed on the aircraft. On the maintenance panel, make sure the Loader 1 and Loader 2 switches of the avionics system are in the off position. If you did the SFIS uploading, on the circuit breaker panel, open the SFIS Power 1 and, after approximately 5 seconds, close it. On the database status page, guarantee that the documents and tables, databases and IMS software files part numbers uploaded are shown with the correct status part number. To check the database uploads and IMS software files, get access to the database page and make sure the files installed are shown in white text and with the correct part numbers. To do these checks, please use the files part number listed on the SB. To check the status of the FMS performance part numbers, Click on M and on the half tab and select FMS. Make sure the part number of each one of the databases shows white and is the same listed on the SB. If you did the TCAS uploading, do the check of the software version of the transponder unit. On the System Operations page, select All ATAs and select Navigation. On the System field, Select TCAS 
and make sure that the field CPN file and loaded configuration part number shows the same part number listed on the SB applicable to your aircraft. If you did the pilot or co-pilot MKP uploading, do a check of the MKP software version. Access the System Operations page and on the View field, select All ATAs. Select Instruments and Recordings and select Pilot Multifunction Keyboard. Select Configuration tab. Make sure the field CPN shows the part number listed on the SB for the pilot. Do the same check for the co-pilot choosing the co-pilot multifunction keyboard and click on the configuration tab. To do the SFIS check on the front panel of the SFIS, push the menu button M. Using the right soft key, go to the next option and press the button M. Choose System Status. System OK shows. On the screen, make sure the field SW part and aircraft configuration file number shows the same part number listed on the SB. After 10 seconds, the SFIS shows normal screen. Make sure these messages are not shown on the CAS window. Do all the tests applicable to your aircraft. Remove from the work area all tools, equipment and material that you used and fill out the service bulletin implementation and evaluation.